Hey there guys, this is uh, my new machine, it's called Grand Casino, it's a MPU5 500pound jackpot fruit machine, it runs on the two LED screens, one being a touch screen, uh, has all the standard features, no acceptor, coin entry, blah blah blah, um, so yeah, there's me in the reflection, hello, um, but yes, so um, it's a bit Podge, you can see it's got a casino front there, grand casino top, grand casino bottom, and a casino payout tray. Um, generally speaking, it doesn't really notice that much given the name of the two. Um, both got casino written boat in it, so you know it's um, generally not too much of an issue. But yeah, so I'm going to turn the machine on and show it all up and running takes a minute or two to initialise And there we have it, all up and running. As you can see it has the standard £500 jackpot payout, as well as the, uh, the reels. Very nice demonstration mode at the top. And a couple of pounds in my pocket. Unfortunately I haven't set the hopper up to accept notes even though there's no money in the hopper because I am actually skint at the moment I'll put a couple of pounds in just to demonstrate Welcome to Grand Casino. not a great deal in fact Zilch. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you through um, some of the inside so you know how they all run on the inside um, and yeah so basically just show you the ins and outs and maybe teach you a few things that you may not already know which would be a real benefit. So the keys are on the side here for the top door and the key obviously at the bottom there for the cash drawer. So I'm just going to undo the top door, open it up and it goes straight into service mode. This is the inside of the machine. Here's the huge hopper that holds £750 upwards to about £1,000, I believe, and your 10p hopper right there. So it's running on a dual hopper system. There's the power supply for the MPU5 board, and as you can see, it's got the chip in there for Grand Casino in an enhanced Rio cabinet. This is, of course, the enhanced Rio cabinet. Oh, I'm actually missing the top, but I will eventually get round to replacing it. Now these machines are uh, selling quite expensive on, on eBay at the moment, uh, and uh, quite rightly so, because they are amazing machines. It's got quite a few games on there, one being the, the Grand Casino that you can play on real play, 
and the other lot you can play on demonstration mode. However, if you're able to get hold of the program chip, or oh, sorry, chip card, and also the security chip for that uh, game itself, then you can run those on real play as well. So yeah, inside here, obviously you've got your, your note acceptor. This is a JCM, I believe, a Japan cash, yeah. Um, standard one for that. Uh, not really a lot to show you in here. Obviously you've got the back of the touch screen, the micro touch, um, and there is the tube lighting behind here. There's your starter motor, down the bottom here, obviously you've got your payout, and you've got a nice bit of clear perspex there so you can get some nice light down into your payout tray. <clears throat> this big grey box here is what the uh, the computer runs on. It runs on Windows XP. Um, yes, I know Windows. It leads to all sorts of trouble. Um, here you've got all like, your uh, two screen inputs and outputs. Uh, the input, sorry, is for the touch screen. Uh, via USB and the other USB uh, goes straight to the hopper connects it all up together and obviously got your audio out jack and there's a nice I mean I wouldn't have a clue where to start obviously I don't know if it called for it I'd have to but the, the, the electronics in this is absolutely incredible I mean you've got transformers there which then leads up to um, <laughs> uh, an extra uh, extension lead there which then runs down to there and also if I show you in here this is the top door that opens up you remove the little screw here so fly screw thing And then that comes out like that. Dusty. There's your lamp board. Um, and yeah, so that would be what was running the top box that comes through here. I did actually used to have one, but I sold it on eBay. Wish I hadn't now. Um, but yeah, so that's basically. I'm going to do another video at some point um, on how to format your hard drive. So if any of you are sitting there and you've buggered your £500 jackpot machine uh, running on the same software uh, then fear not because I know how to sort it out the only trouble you may have is getting hold of the image in the first place to replace it on your machine um, but this just locks in like that and you just push it in and you release that little catch there which then holds it shut so yeah, that's generally the inside. It runs on a standard SR5 coin mechanism, uh, Mars control. Um, yeah, so that's that's generally the inside of the machine. So I'll just close it up. I'll take this key out, and I'll show you down the bottom. Okay, so down the bottom here, you've got your standard switches and you've got a little meter there to say total cash in and out and I think it's an electronic one so it's, it displays all sorts of different. That one there is just empty, I don't know what goes in there, maybe a data pack. So you've got your bottom door switch and inside here you've got your dopper ho hopper dump switch and your cash drawer there for all your lovely pennies that fall through that doesn't go into the, either of the hopper. Generally silver will be going into that one, minus your 10 peas. So yeah, that is basically my fruit machine. And what I'll do is I'll run through a few um, tests to show you how to run your tests. Run you through some tests and um, just show you how everything works in the system. So first of all here we've got event logs. 
that's quite simple, it just tells you when something's happened. So that's just my basic what I've been doing. So I've also turned it on, changed some games, put refill key in, blah blah blah. And that is um, the technical side of it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it doesn't really show a lot you need to know, especially for home use. System information tells you what your system's running on. So it shows me that I'm running on Executive 2, um, and what the cabinet type is, and what uh, operation mode I'm running on. So I'm running on B3 at the moment. Count and C basically tells you the, the meters, which is quite handy. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Now this is the part that uh, you probably find useful. Um, in the config menu here is where we're going to set up new games. So I'll run you through how to install new games um, onto your machine. But first I'll show you exactly how to install games that are currently on the hard drive. So at the moment I've got the Rainbow Riches installed. So to install a new game all you do is you hit the install button there and as you can see these are the games that I've got installed on the hard drive so to install a new game all you need to do is hit the install button there and it will install a new game what I must uh, advise though is that unless you want to have to reboot the machine if you're on like the B3 category stay with the B3 category because if you want to change to like the category C or the category D machines like the Jackpot Joker or the Monty Python there or the Smash Hits um, you'll need to change the operating category um, to C or D depending on whether you want it on £5 or £35 but again I'll show you that in a bit, bit, bit more detail as we go along so uh, we're on the B3 category I've just installed the B3 Monty Python and the first thing we need to do is hit enable because then the machine will actually play the machine because if you try it and run it with it in with the enable um, off all you'll get is machine disabled you won't be able to do anything, nothing will work so you have to close your door again and open it back up to get in back into your service menu go into config, games, enable, yes and then also we've got a config button here which you can set your percentage your stake and your jackpot amount and yeah so it tells you the available game category so as you can see there's only B3 available for this one and that's pretty much how you install a new game um, to set up a new category of machine, so if you want to play a machine on £35 or £5 jackpot, what you do is you go into terminal configuration and you go to operator config and you go to operating category. Now, in here, you'll see all the operating categories that are available. As you can see, you've got category D, which is £5, or category C, which is £25 or £35, depending on what game you you install or whether that is actually available and category B3 which is generally £500 jackpot. So to install a new one, so if I wanted to install a category C game I would click select and it would advise me that the following game does not support that category so saying that Monty Python doesn't work with category C but that's fine because what we'll do is once we've installed category C we will restart the machine and um, install a new game. So hit category C, you select that and you hit exit and you need to reboot the machine to apply the changes. So you hit yes and it starts rebooting.
eventually. Doesn't normally take this long, but oh well. Okay, so we're, um, we're currently installed on the category D, sorry, category C. If I try to run it, it will just come up machine, machine disabled. So again, we just have to close the door, open the door up again to get back to the menu. We'll go config, games, and then we'll install a category C or a category D. So one of my favourite games on here is uh, Jackpot Joker, which is a very good game. So I'll install the Jackpot Joker. Okay, so that's all installed now. Remember, hit enable to enable the machine. Again, it's got config there, and you can set it up to 50p a stake, or you can set your percentage, and the jackpot that's available is £35. And again, once you've done that, just exit all the machine, all the uh, menus, and just hit demo, and off you go. This is quite a fun game. <laughs> that happens most of the time. Okay, so let's go back to the menu. Okay, so in config again we'll go through some some of the terminal configurations now in general settings you can set your volume you can set it really high or you can set it to nothing I think about 15 is about the right side size um, number for the volume and uh, time to attract in seconds is basically the attract mode and how quickly um, it will go into attract mode and obviously log logs to keep in days so it keeps a month worth of logs ok so in machine details you get to um, write down basically your details like the name and your address so as you can see this one's called Elvis and it's in the office so if for some reason your leg uh, your machine crew legs so to walk out there's nowhere to send it back. I don't know why this is on here, um, or whether it's just security, I don't know. But um, obviously you don't need to put anything in there. It's just there for uh, in case you wanted to, I suppose. So in operator config again, um, you can set your float levels. So my hopper float level is um, basically is set to uh, it's a 750 pound um, hopper, so you can set your hopper divert level to 750, and your one pound hopper float level you can set that to 750 pounds. Um, and basically, once you have 750 pounds in your hopper, it will start diverting down to the uh, cash box. And the same for your 10 pound hopper, uh, sorry, 10p hopper. Uh, it's a 20 pound hopper in 10 p's. So just set your mint, both of these uh, to twenty pounds. You can put your divert level lower, um, but basically, I mean, you don't have to do that. It's, um, I, unless you want your your money divert into the cash box, um, those are normally the settings to have them on. Um, hand pay. That's, and this is quite useful for people who um, have a machine, uh, but they they don't have any money in it. So instead of like with a fruit machine where you hit collect and it suddenly sets off an alarm because um, you know, you've got it, it's run out of coins and it wants you to hop, uh, you know, it says I owe you and the machine goes all out of order. Um, basically, if you um, if you've got no money in it, for example, you can set that down to like say five pounds or even zero, but have, make sure it says enabled there. And then when you go into your game. If I just get a win here, and I can show you exactly what to do. 
I mean, obviously this is in demo mode, but for if I was if I had Grand Casino um, installed on here and I won, um, then uh, it would be it would actually pay out. But let's just work up here. Okay, so I'm going to collect three pounds. Okay, now if I was to collect that, and let's say if there's no money in the machine, you can hit collect, and it will say that hand pays required. Please call the manager. Now, as long as you actually have a refill key available, I've got two here. I've got one on my um, set of keys and one sort of spare one. Um, they're just your standard ones you can get off eBay. Um, I can't remember what number they are. They actually have a certain number. Um, oh, eight seven triple zero. And all you do is search for that on eBay, and um, just type in refill key, and it will um, it will come up with one. They're only like a pound or two each. Um, so yeah, it says hand pay required. Please call manager. So what you do is you just put your refill key in the bottom here, and you turn it, and it says hand pay value three pound. Press start button to confirm payment. So you just push start. Hand pay confirmed. Okay. Hand pay value zero. Turn off the refill key, and you're back to how you are. Good as new. Ready to play again. Oh, well, I've just done it for the twenty three pounds that's left. Okay, so and that's so that's that's quite handy um, if you have no money in it or if you win a five hundred pound jackpot. So I mean, you could set it to however much you have in your machine. So if you know you've got fifty quid in there, you could put your hand uh, your hand pay limit to say forty quid, and anything over the forty quid, um, instead of the hopper running dry and it says that it owes money, um, it will just come up with that menu and it saves you having to um, like go through the faff of filling it back up again. Uh, I think well, these are what my um, settings are set to. So there's a bank limit of £200, a credit limit of £50 and direct pay to £200. And obviously we've been through operating category. Network address or server address um, is an address I, it, I gather it, it talks to. Um, I don't use that. It's mine. My, my machine's not hooked up to any kind of server or um, telephone line or broadband connection, so I don't use that. I wouldn't. I don't have the first clue on what that's about. Whether it's to do with like updates from Barcrest or whether it's to do with machine talking to um, like a security server in a premises, I really am not sure. Okay, so that's the config. Um, updates. Now I'll go through this again a bit later. Um, regarding your updates um, but basically that's the button you need to push when you want to install new games now obviously reboot machine is very self explanatory just to restart your machine um, for any reason and so the next one we're going to go through is service so push the service bar and it asks you to press your test switch and secondary switch to access service screens so what we do is we open the machine up to the inside and what we want to do is we want to hit Hopper's top tap button and the service button which is if I can get my Hopper out is the uh, little red switch right next door to that um, to the right of the white wire so I'm going to have to just put the camera down for a second just so I can do this So you'll hear that little click when you know that um, it's actually worked. Close your door back up. And this is the test menu. Now, obviously, again, these are all very self-explanatory. Um, test lamps, so auto step lamps. Um, or you can flash your lamps or manually step the lamps. But basically, I'm just going to flash my lamps. And you can see that they're all working except for these ones a bit strange I don't know why they're not working they should be working
Oh, right, okay, so the top wave is basically the top of the machine, which I don't have. I don't have one of them. They're basically like the Showtime uh, features or um, the £500 jackpot that's uh, like circular. I used to have one of them, but I'm regretting getting rid of it now. But Whew. So yeah, so that's, that's that test. Um, your validator test, um, basically it's a coin test. So um, what you can do is you can test all your coins and your notes and it will just come up here saying how much is, is gone through or whether they've gone through. Um, so basically if you wanted to test that the coins are diverting to the cash box you'd hit that first, plonk a pound in, and as you can hear it goes straight down and the pound coin goes up by one. If you want to divert the coins to the hopper you push that one there, you put another pound in, and as you can hear, it goes straight through, uh, sorry, to the hopper, and to lock the validator, which basically to test that the machine will not accept any coins and that your um, your flow, you haven't got any jams or anything like that, you hit lock validator, try and put a pound in, as you can see, it comes straight back out again. So that's that test there. Audio test again is very self explanatory. Left channel. How strange, that's got King KO music, which is the machine I've just sold. <laughs> uh, right channel. That's very interesting actually because um, that's just shown me that my uh, channels are set around the wrong way. My left is on the right, my right's on the left, so I might have to rewire my speakers. Both channels. Okay, so that's basically that test. Your hopper test, this is very, um, this is uh, a good test because basically um, you can go into here and you can pay out your coins without having to go through any rigmarole of um, you know, going through any other um, tests or anything like that. So if you've got 20 quid in the machine that you want to take out, you just hit 20 coins for one pound, and again, the same with your hopper, or you can just pay out one coin pay out one coin for your pound as well, so I know there's one pound in my machine at the moment because uh, I'm pretty skinny at the moment, so I'm just going to hit one pound and out it pops. I'd better just check that there's no more in there. No, nope, that's dry. So, yeah, so that's your hopper test. Video test again is... Um, very self-explanatory. It just goes through the alignment of the screen. It goes through white, black, red, green, blue. Um, just make sure that all your um, all your colours and everything are, are working right, and that all your monitors are right. Switch test. Again, you can test your switches. Um, so basically, it tells you when the buttons are being pushed. Um, again, you don't have to go through any of this, it's just it's, it's handy if, if for some reason um, something's not working and you're wondering why, you can go into your test switch um, area and um, make sure that they're all hooked up and working properly. Meters test, again, very self-explanatory, it's making sure that the meters are working right. Data port test, I don't have a data port in here so it's going to fail, yeah. And set clock, again. Nice and nice and easy, self-explanatory. You can set your daylight savings time as well. Okay, so that's the service menu, and that's um, that's pretty much it in terms of um, the back end of the program. Now, um, obviously, I know I fiddle about the speakers at the top, and um, normally I change bulbs without turning the power supply off, but. Um, I would advise turning the power supply off for this next part because um, well, A, it says you, you should um, and B, is dealing with high voltage electricity so it's always, uh, it's always handy to turn your machine off now if your tube on the front of the machine um, doesn't work for any reason um, it could just be down to your starter motor, um, which is this little doodad here. If I can get it 
this one do. So he's in a really awkward position. It's deep in there. So to remove it, just turn it counterclockwise, very difficultly, um, like so, and then just remove it. Now this is just a standard starter motor. Um, it's got the wattage and all that for what it's designed for. Um, I picked these up from B&Q the other day for a grand total of, well, I mean it's got pound written on it on, on the on the thing but uh, these cost me 10p from B&Q um, they were just getting rid of them so um, I got quite a few of them they're not very expensive a couple of quid maximum in your um, in your normal electric shops and that just fits back into the hole there I don't know if you can really see but just line it up I don't design these things to be done one-handed. And then just turn it to the right to um, put it back in. And then when it's when you hear it like kind of thud into position, you know that it's um, it's done. Now, in order to access your tubing, as you can not see, let me first turn some lights on around here you might be able to see now there it is, so that is actually where your tube is held behind this nice uh, white piece of plastic um, I have a few screws missing on mine it would appear, which I didn't actually realise until just this very minute um, but in order to access that panel all you need to do is remove that screw there that screw there and that screw there now the whole unit will come away and I don't know quite how much room you'll have but you will need to loosen these cables here that are attached um, via a, a springy plug thing um, just make sure that when you do pull it away um, you remove any cables I mean you can just remove them from here but just make a note, take a picture on your phone as to where they go so you don't um, forget where they go, in what order that they go in or anything like that um, make a little note some somehow and then this will just pull away um, you may need to remove the buttons to um, take it off and I'll show you exactly how you remove a button Quite simple, really, with the old machines or the the um, like the uh, uh, the Horizon cabinet, you'd have to like twist it sideways. With these ones, you just pull them down, pull them down, and that's what you have. Uh, obviously, you've got your micro switch in there. Um, that doesn't appear to be. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. That's... Um, so yeah, and just again, just to put it back in, just simple case of pushing it back up but just make sure that everything's um, all nice and snug and secure and just test your button before um, before closing it back up just so say if you um, open it back up again right well I think that's um, I mean these machines are so like user friendly that um, you know you really don't have to do a lot to get things Things moving um, in them. It's uh, they're all very. Um, I say they're all made very well. They're relatively new, or not new, but um, you know, newer than some of the machines out there nowadays um, on eBay and all that. So you shouldn't run into many problems. Um, if you do have any problems, just message me on this um, area or have a look at my other fruit machine uh, videos. 
um, and leave a comment or subscribe uh, because basically I want as many people to subscribe and I want to help as many people um, fix their machines as possible. If you can't fix your machine then give me an email and I may be able to buy it off you because I love fixing up these old machines. Um, it's just <laughs> what I do. Um, but yeah. So that's pretty much it. Like I say, any problems, um, leave a message. Thanks for watching. Hi there, guys. Uh, one last thing I uh, forgot to show you is how to um, update your machine with new games. So I'll mm. just show you how to do that. Once I find the file that I'm looking for. Okay. So all you need to do uh, when updating your machine is you must make sure that you have uh, these files here uh, or any of these one files and these are dot bpack um, so in order to install these new machines onto your uh, machine uh, one thing to bear in mind is that these will only be available in demo mode unless you have the security chip and game card available um, but I mean some people enjoy playing it on demo mode anyway so uh, as long as you've got these BPAC files that's all that matters so I'll show you how to do that and one thing that you will need is a USB stick just a standard one obviously the bigger the better um, so all you need to do is plug that into your computer fishies um, and then copy over whichever games you've downloaded onto the USB stick shouldn't take too long okay so this is just finishing off now um, took a bit of time because my hard drive is a bit knackered but and my backup hard drive is a bit knackered. But one thing you should do um, is get in the habit of, uh, like, if you haven't got a machine yet, or if you're going to get one, or if you've just got one, is back up your hard drive. Can't stress that enough. So we're going to take this downstairs. I will hopefully do another video um, showing you how to back up your hard drive and should you uh, corrupt your hard drive how to uh, restore your backup image ok shouldn't take too long Okay, so earlier I said about the updates and where it says uh, insert USB key. Well, this is the menu you want to go on now. Uh, you want to insert your USB key right underneath here. 
in one of the spare USB slots. I know there's one just about there. Okay, so that's in there. And again, you hear the little um, click. Um, now it is saying uh, that the copy that I have on here already is the same as the one that I'm going to be installing. Um, so all you do is hit select copy and if you have multiple games that you've put onto your flash drive then you just tap away and, and, and until they're all ticked like that. And then all you do is hit copy files, so I'll do that. And hopefully I won't um, lose Elvis smash hits if the one that's on the hard drive is corrupted. Eventually, she's got really big ears. Okay, and it says remove USB key. So you take that back out, then you hear another little click which means it's back to it and that is literally all you do to install new games uh, there are several websites online that host these BPAC files um, just look around and you will find them so a search for Barcrest BPAC file download and you may come across them or a website that may give you a clue as to where they're being hosted okay um, one last thing that I should um, go into, whilst you're on this menu here, if you turn your refill key, it will actually tell you how much it thinks um, is in the machine at the moment. So the machine at the moment thinks uh, that there is £485 in the hopper, that my hopper divert level is £750, and that my, to fill up the machine I need to add £265 into the machine. Now, again, you can just hit like next hopper and it'll tell you um, about your 10 p's. It'll tell you that you need like to put 16 pounds worth of 10 p's in to fill that up. Um, account C again, it just tells you your meters. Um, or you can hit hopper top up, which means if you just hit that hopper top up there, it will basically set all your meters to full. Um, so, for example, if your note acceptor isn't working um, when you're playing your machine, it's because it thinks that there isn't enough pound coins in the machine. So you want to make sure that your hopper balance, uh, or, or go into your hopper, into your one pound hopper screen when you re turn your refill key up here. And then, I mean, you can put in any kind, like if you hit 30 it will add 30, or it, you, it will assume that you've put 30 pound coins in the machine. Um, or you can just push hopper top up and up the top there you see it says it thinks it's £750 in there uh, and now basically your note acceptor will work um, because it thinks that the machine's full even though you may have only £10 in there I mean I have no pounds in there um, and it will accept notes now so that's quite handy and then in your collection um, it basically it will empty um, I'm gathering it will Empty your hopper. Oh, sorry. Yes, no. That's a that's a different menu I'm thinking about. Um, but basically, it's saying that you know you you checked, and it will come up on the log. So um, you know, basically, you can confirm that you have um, run a collection on it, which is quite handy. Um, if it's in an actual um, arcade, but not very handy for your home use people because it's got no use whatsoever. So yeah, that is that is that, and like I say, in the, in the next video, I'll show you how to um, install a new image on your corrupted hard drive, um, and how to back up an image uh, from a working hard drive. So in the future, in case you need to um, reinstall your hard drive, uh, you'll have a working copy. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Cheers.